All right, YouTube, today we're going to play some Death Shadow. I'm going to give this a whirl. I've been playing around with a lot of versions, so this is what I'm, I think I'm getting close to. Let's see how this works. And this hand is fine. I would like a disc. Hopefully we draw into a discard spell. The opponent keeps a ley line, which means that they're bogles, which this abrupt decay is good against. This has been a little bit of why modern online has been a little frustrating. Wow, what is this? Well, oh, we're playing against Adnaz, okay. Um, so let's do the Bogle trick. Fatal push, we don't want that. I'm gonna fetch a Blood Crypt. We don't have any uh, we don't have any counter spells in our main deck, and I might want to bolt myself just to get like an instant in the graveyard and grow Death Shadow. That other abrupt decay is not bad. Dismiss this. So we're gonna be able to get Tarmogoyf down. So we have a lot of uh, like artifact disruption. I guess we're just gonna make sure that we don't get run out of the gym by, I guess, like a... I want to be able to kill this Lotus Bloom. Oh, oh they're putting a count on this, okay. That seems bold, like, I don't know, you're using the resources in your gemstone line. Yeah, so we're just going to blow this up now. It's going to grow our Tarmogoyf two points. Which I'm all about... This is kind of the best we can do. It would be sick if we had a Stubborn Denial for this Lotus Loom. We'll get those after sideboard, though. Opponent needs two, I guess, two half perfects here. And they'd have to do it off no cantrips, which would be kind of impressive. Looks like they're going to get it, though. Unless this is just another... Well, I already tapped two mana. Is this just another unlife? It's a pentad prism. My opponent doesn't know what's happening. They're pump faking back and forth between what they're doing here. This has got to be a pentad prism. Maybe? I don't know. I have no idea. I'm just going to blow this Lotus Bloom up. Another on life. Yeah. I'm just going to blow. I'm just going to hit this. Or do I want to hit this? I probably just want to hit this. Cut their mana off. Didn't want to add colorless mana. I'm just going to rebuy my Street Wraith. With this K command, we might hit a Death Shadow or a. Um, so destroy, or we could hit a Traverse uh, target. No, destroy target artifact. Return target creature. I hate how this goes. Return target creature card from your graveyard. Return target creature. Destroy target artifact. Get this. Destroy this. I don't think there's anything I can do on three mana here. Packed. Okay. I guess that's a reason to use Abrupt Decay. All right, well, hopefully we're not dead, but we easily could be. I mean, he could have. I guess he couldn't kill us last turn. Well, that's another. But then we're dead to, like, I don't know. I guess I don't know which is what is right to do. He still dies to this, right? So he needs to go off like... How does this work? I guess he just go. He just wins like bef with this pack trigger on the stack, right? Okay. So let's just let him go through it, see if he's got anything weird. He's got a ley line there, Melvin. I can't like 
abrupt decay anything, right? Or are you talking about like brutality or take up with Liliana? Yeah, I'm not gonna actually I'm not gonna actually make them put this on the stack. I just wanna make sure there's nothing weird. Would you play Lily you talking about playing Liliana on three or four this turn? Which turn would you have played the, the Veil there? It's got one, two, three. Okay. Sorry, I just wanted to see it. They fold to a turn three, Liliana. Well, didn't on turn... Maybe I messed up. I might have messed up there. Because, like, then on turn three, they go, like... They run the play. So when they played... When they played the... Uh, when I played the whatever it is... Couldn't they have comboed there if I had ended up replicate the... Um, if I had not abrupt decay the the uh, whatever it is the unlife, all they would have needed was they'd have had the mana and they would have only needed one card, right? That was my that, that's why I did it, whether it was right or not, you know. That's left up to interpretation. Sort by converting mana cost. I do like how I can just kind of do it with this version of the deck here, do the little switcheroo, have like the fair game, sub it in for the unfair game right here, which I'm a big fan of. I would like to play first. I wonder why in my picture today it showed... Oh, I can't. Well, I get three redraws out of another land. Yeah, I don't know why that I've got... So three redraws. This hand's pretty good. Like, Stub's good. Nah, I'm gonna ship this. Yeah, this hand's much better. Yep, yeah, this hand's pretty good. We'll keep this one. Um... I think I do want, I think I am going to want this. So I'm going to put this on top with the option to fetch it away. I'm probably not, because I'm going to want the second stub, I'm probably not. Yeah, that's nice that I don't have to take care of a can trip on one or anything like that. Put a card on top. There's the Lotus Bloom. Play another fetch land and pass. So next turn we can get our shadow into play. Just barely. It'll be a cute little 1-1. One, one. Unless my opponent gives me something to... I don't think I'm going to command this. I think I would rather just free my mana up to have... Like, to not have to commit 3 mana to killing this next turn. And I would rather just get my death shadow into play. Wow, we have... We are stubborn AF over here. At least we got the first couple spells covered. Though we are going to need to find a way to grow this Death Shadow. I would love to get like a fetch land just so that this stub is turned on. Here.
Nice. And that turns on the command also. Which I am all about. So let me go get another red source. I think that I'm going to try to like shatter shock this in my opponent's upkeep or shatter discard and then stubborn denial whatever they have for like interaction destroy target no nope. the target player discards a card destroy target artifact There's the black. There's Angel's Grace. And if they have Pact Negation, then like, that's life. Nope, looks like we're gonna get lucky. So they still discard a card. Nice. Then we have another path, or another step up for their next play, which is good. That's not bad. That doesn't take that doesn't take a cut a turn off. If I draw another fetch land or a street wraith, it cuts a turn off or a thought seize. Basically, another way to do damage to myself. And we got their next play covered. This is like the poetic justice here. Stub this. They have a pack, and that's their entire turn. They probably should have done that on my upkeep. Yeah, that's that'll do it. We'll just nug them for some damage. I do like how the, this version of this deck, I can just kind of like flop it. Like I can have the Bloodbred Elves in the main deck, and then kind of switch them out for counter magic. In like the battle rages, kind of get a little bit of the best of both worlds. So do I want to bring any of these in on the draw? Are any of these other cards a bit too slow? I think I like my main deck the way that it is. I don't think I want to cut any of these cards. I could see cutting maybe like some Inquisitions for like a grudge or a command just to kind of insulate myself against a ley line, but I think we're just going to keep this. We're going to play like a Delver game. Just lower the ground. Hey, Johnny, how you doing tonight? This hand is decent besides the fact that we don't have a creature. So I don't know. I don't know if I can keep this hand or not. I don't think that I can. I think we're gonna just ship this one back. Can't be very good against Leyline, but we're probably gonna we're gonna ship this. Mulliganing tends to be against my religion, so I really hate mulliganing, but my opponent obliged me. 
All right, we're gonna keep this. Put that on the bottom. We're just looking for a black source. We're just looking for, we have, oh nice, they gave us a black source. What a guy. Okay, um, we go get Water Grave. I don't really want to draw another land off this Street Wraith. What a guy this guy is here. And I'm gonna do this right now just in case I hit a Stubborn Denial and it's, and it's relevant. It looks like it will be relevant if I draw it here. No, nope, Drew Tarn Life. Which Goyf is good. Why is it so big? So I am going to get one turn to have my Tarn Goyf be large enough to Stubborn Denial this. If I draw the Stubborn Denial. So there's always that. Put on the bottom. Alright, I know they, this is gone. Do you decide on what you're going to play this weekend, Johnny? Put a card on top. What a joke. All right, I'm going to play this Tom Goyf no matter what. And I'll bobble my opponent in their upkeep. Now, if I draw like a... Uh, if I draw a Stubborn Denial, then I'm just going to Battle Rage my Tarmogoyf in my main phase in order to make sure... Ad, ad nauseum, okay. To make sure that my Goyf has Ferocious. So I need I need a Discard Spell. I need a Discard Spell or a Stubborn Denial. A Discard Spell and a Stubborn Denial would be sick. Okay, our opponent misses a land drop. Hey, Archmage. We have four or five Tarmor Life. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, Command. Into Abrupt Decay. All right. What do they do? They went top, top. They went top, top, which means, like, I need to actually hold up this Colagon's Command, I think. Because they, they don't have six mana. They won't have six mana in their upkeep. So if, if I go like... I could just... Well, I can't get my I can't get my Death Shadow into play. So I just need to go attack, go Shatter Shock in the upkeep to make it so they don't have enough... Then they won't have enough mana to add Nas with Angel's Grace. Unless they have a, a Simeon Spirit Guide in their hand. That, which they could easily have. Nice. All right, so before they go to their main phase, target player discards a card, destroy target artifact. So they would need, they know they have Adnaz, so they would need Angel's Grace, Simeon Spirit Guide to kill me here, which looks like what's going to happen. All right, just a naked Ad Nauseam. Brave Titan, Unlife. Well, now you've just got to keep going, right? Okay. Well, I don't really know what's going on here. Grave Titan. Well, now we've got him next turn. They must have like untapped White Source. No, because we would have seen it. So the great they kept they kept the Grave Titan on top of their deck. So now they're just dead, unless they have a pact, and then they're dead again. To their pact. Lotus Bloom. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. That's... That's Stubbs Gas. That's why I love this deck here. You just, like... You just beat the tar out of all this random BS. Like, if people are just bringing in, like... Like... The hardest part about playing, like, the easiest, the nice thing about Death Shadow is, like, most of the time, like, in the beginning of the tournament, you're going to get, like, if anybody's, like, looking to come play Modern, they bring their just, their kind of brews, you usually just, 
get out of those early rounds good. Which means it might not be a super great deck to if you have like buys at a GP. Maybe you don't want this deck here. But you do just kind of like stomp random stuff. So I hope everyone's having a good time tonight. Welcome to playing some Death Shadow, trying to figure this stuff out. My dog is just absolutely pooped over there. He's just sleeping on his back. Like, what a complete nut. It's just me and Philly for the next couple days. My wife is uh my wife is gone. She's heading to she's I'm um, going to a it's me and Philly for the next like two weeks. She's gone to a couple conferences. Yeah, I decided to side the stubborn denials. And I think part of that is just because like Jund is all over Magic Online. Alright, I'm gonna keep this hand and I'm just gonna fetch shock traverse because I doubt that we're gonna get to a point in this game where both of these are turned on. And I might as well get to my command. So let's just get Overgrown Tomb. And we will traverse for a swamp. So that we can cast our Lilianas if we draw them. Alright. Speaking of the, the devil, we're going to play some Jund. Oh no, we're playing a mirror. Nice. Maybe no. Hollowed one. All right. Well, there's one hollowed one. I think we get this Colagons command. Um, fifteen. That. My opponent ditched a Goblin Lore and a Collective Brutality, which are things to note. We shocked there because if I draw another fetch land, I want to give myself the option to make my Death Shadow larger instead of just playing the basic. Kind of just juggling around the mana base a little bit. Dude, where'd my chat go? My chat is just like... That is so frustrating. I don't know what's been going on with my... OBS lately, but my OBS has been like all sorts of tweaking out. Like it switched screens for the first time. Like it started capturing my second screen, like, and it had never done that before. Now my chat's not showing up on the thing. Maybe I have to go stream decker, stream labs. I gotta launch my. This is so unprofessional. This is just wildly. I'm like, I'm, ash I'm ashamed of myself and my decisions. Chat box. Watch. Tassiger. Okay. So my opponent's gonna crack me, which is cool. And then I'm probably just going to play Tarmogoyf Death Shadow this turn. Like, yeah, everything on my board is kind of small, but I can double block this Tassiger. That doesn't do anything. Yeah, I think we're just going to play these two. God, that's so frustrating that my chat's just not showing up there. Dad, I just can't win. In this turn, we'll K-Command this, which will grow my Tarmogoyves by three, which will make them five sixes. And then next turn, we'll smack down. Probably make them discard a card. It's a Lightning Bolt. Don't bolt my... Okay. Well, now like, you can't attack. Now you're just like up shit creek without a paddle here. Like, like that just was not a good play, sir. It turned that turns on my traverse. Goblin Lore, you do you. Flame Wake Phoenix, okay. So they have lands to do stuff. Those flame wake phoenixes can come back. So 
So these flame like finishes are gonna be annoying. I might have to go like might have to just like attack on my turn. And then Colagon's command like shatter shatter shock. If I draw a land, then I can go like fetch land shatter shock. So my opponent can crack me for Alright, so that doesn't do anything. Yeah, I think I just attack with both of my Tarmogoyce, and if he doesn't block, then I just go upstairs with the Kologon's command and kill him. And then next turn, I'll just go Shatter, Shock, take six, die to Lightning Bolt. But, like, he has to block with something here. He should block with this Hollowed one, I think. Because it shuts off K-Command. I guess I could have gone Shock, Shatter, Shock, Make him chump with his tasker turn. Yeah, that, that would have been the better play to make, like, turn off this flame wake phoenix unless he puts more power on the board, which would have been would have been a good move. Yeah, that was probably like a little knucklehead thing to do. All right, he just takes ten. Yeah, I think I definitely did, like... I definitely didn't, could have, could have played that a little better. But, we will command him out of the game. Okay, so in this matchup... I don't really know how to sideboard in this matchup. Like, I probably, like... The fatal pushes aren't very good. I'm gonna assume that this K command's okay, and I'm gonna assume the Bloodbraid Elf is okay. But I don't know if I want the Battle Rages or like this Grudge. I'm assuming my collective brutalities probably aren't great. This Grudge is probably fine. He has Blood Moon after sideboard, so it's good to hold these in here and keep some removal for the one two. On the play, I think I want these stubborn denials, because it's good to be able to hit like a goblet, like a burning inquiry on one. But it just doesn't really matter on the draw. They're just too fast. Liliana of the Veil might not be super great because of Blood Gas and Flame Wake Phoenix. It's maybe just like a little bit more early game interaction. These can kill Phoenixes, they can kill uh, Blood Gas in a pinch. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try this. Might be a battle rage matchup. Like on the on the play, I could see signing out all my bloodbraid elves, bringing in stubs and battle rages, and then just trying to go over the top of them that way. Yeah, this hand's pretty good. And if our opponent does burning inquiry us on one, we have an answer to a, whatever it is, a hollowed one. So. Yeah, here comes looting. Okay. So we're definitely just going to go fetch shock dot seize on one. Hopefully we can hit like a delve. We definitely want to hit like a delve card. Or a goblin lore or burning inquiry. That is the plan. Yeah, it's so frustrating that my chat isn't working. I'm gonna have to like, so he ditched a flame wake phoenix and a lightning bolt. So I'm definitely gonna try to see if I can kill whatever he is planning to get that flame wake phoenix back with. Oh, double Gurmag Angler, what a dagger. I'm just going to take his looting, make him delve away his faithless looting, and then leave him with a second Gurmag Angler that's, like, never going to get cast. 
Because now if he wants to delve, if he wants to get his Gurmag Angler in play, he actually has to ditch, like, eat his Flame Lake Phoenix, which is a small victory, which he doesn't want to do. So we bought ourselves a turn. I'm going to keep my life total high. Then he's still, like... He still can't get the Flame Wake Phoenix in play this this turn unless he draws a fetch land, which he did. Which is a bummer. Yeah, I took a I took a little bit of a break. I was playing some Legacy and I had a lot of fun doing that. My friend GC Brissett, who was in the chat a little while ago, loaned me some of his bug cards. So this takes the creature out of the graveyard, which makes this even smaller. It's just pump faking it here. I don't know if this thing's coming or going. But uh, now I'm back. I got to figure out what I'm doing for my next IQ. So I do need to get a plan going here. So let's see if I can. Okay, so we just he's just drawing lands. That Gurmag Angler is not coming down for at least a little while. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to take five from this Angler. I'll fetch a tap land. Get this. Maybe I might block this just to go get Death Shadow. That's a wicked draw. Oh, we ditched an Angler and a Hollowed One and a Blood Crypt. That was pretty lucky. Now my Goyf is... I actually can just eat this Angler in combat if my opponent gets a little too... a little too frisky. So let's hope that's what happens. Oh, man. If that's okay, that actually means I'm going to have a Death Shadow next turn. And it will be bigger than his Angler. So then I'm just have to contend with this Flame Wake Phoenix. So let me get this Blood Crypt into play tapped. And I can kind of mitigate the Phoenix a little bit with this Collective Brutality. Now we have Delirium online. Love to draw Death Shadow as well. Oh, here comes... Is this like another Delve card? No. All right, so now we might have to deal with that. Because that means I'm taking three... Take three, if he puts any way to pump this. Thoughtseize, take three. Take th so I can take Thoughtseize, then go to two. Hope to hit anything that pumps this. That seems a not, like, not great. I can, like, Brutality this next turn, Escalate, gain a bunch of life after I get Death Shadow into play. So think about it, I think winning this game starts with playing Death Shadow. Then we've got at least, we have three points of damage that I can't block coming through. That's definitely something that's gonna, that's probably going to happen here pretty soon. Anglers are such a, is a huge problem, though. Alright, so now... If I just attack... And then I 3-mode it, what happens? We just die on the board, so I can't do that. But I do have to just, like, 3-mode this. Deal with this guy. It's gonna be hard-pressed to win this one anyways, I think. But stealth cards, they are just too good. Needed like one more threat to stick there, just to make it so that I could like power through this thing. 
or Battle Rage, which we didn't keep Battle Rage in our deck on the draw because we wanted the Bloodbraid Elves. But if I draw a Death Shadow here, or a Traverse, or a Tarmogoy, if we're still in business. So you know my opponent's got two lands. We played one of them. That is not what we were looking for. So here's my out. My opponent draws, blocks this Death Shadow. Which they actually could just block this and not die to Battle Rage. They 100% should have blocked there, which is like a little frustrating. I think I think they should have blocked because that Battle Rage would have been 18. They could have back, they could have soaked up five and at 14 and gone to one, right? Maybe not though. They were at they were at 14, right? Took nine, 18. Yeah, they definitely could have sucked it up there. So they're not playing around Battle Rage, which is good to know. So now we sideboard these out. We bring in our counter spells on the play where we can get under like the turn one burning inquiries. And I'll cut a couple of these, probably this, and we'll go something like this. All right, we will keep this. We get a scry. And we get the counter. Leyline of the Void. Okay. We probably want to keep that because it enables our Death Shadows. And we're definitely going to fetch before we cycle if he gives us a target for this Stubborn Denial because we don't want to cycle into our blue source, just like a sequencing thing. Because now let's say we cycle into Death Shadow, draw Death Shadow, we can get two Death Shadows down on turn one, which is pretty great. We're just gonna Stubborn Denial this. I was probably gonna Stubborn Denial anything there. Hopefully my opponent just kept like a really shit hand with a ley line. All right, so this goes good stomping ground. We get a timer wave into play. These delve cards are gonna suck even worse from our opponent now because they, because we don't have a graveyard, so this ley line is going to do some work. <clears throat> they probably have, they obviously have another land, or they would have, like, fetched for a blood crypt, yeah. <clears throat> this ancient grudge is now, like, a super LOL. So they're goblin luring. Another engineer explosives. Land off the top. All right, that's annoying, but like I think the best thing to do is to just get rid of this. Crack my opponent. Next turn, we'll get... Hopefully we draw land. The stopping ground's messing me up. <clears throat> Which, like, we had to get the stopping ground because we both K Command and um, Stubborn Denial, and we had Ancient... Like, we... I guess we didn't need to do it, but that cuts us off from, like, green sources, which is, like, probably going to hurt us later in the game. Punch shocking. So they're flashing back their looting. No, nasty, you're nasty. All right, that's not bad. Play our shadow. I'll stub the back half of this, I think. If my opponent gives me the option, even though it like makes my Tarmogoyf really tiny. <clears throat> Slay line of the void is an issue. But 
So maybe I'll let him do it to hope that like he grows my Tarmogoyf. That's sad. Can't really race this angler. Take five for now. We have a couple big draws, like Liliana the Veil. We have three of those, which will be great. That's not Liliana the Veil. Okay, we'll pass. So now we can actually block this Gurmag Angler. And depending, and then like K command before damage to shock it and have them discard a card, depending on what they discard. Our Tarmogoyf might be large enough to live, or large enough to kill it. Like it's certainly not ideal, but I think it's the line that we have here. So we're gonna block. Then before damage, hopefully they stick our something that grows our time of life. Which it did, so now our time of life trades. So we got that off the battlefield, which is a small victory. Now we get to hopefully we get to stub this looting. We don't get to stub this looting. Um, I'm just gonna. We can't take it home with us, and then maybe this tosses our opponent off a tempo play this turn. But like I did just toss. I know I just tossed away some value, but like, okay, there's the hollowed one, a oh, double hollowed one. Uh, gross. All right. Yeah, didn't didn't get it. Let's jump back into it. Yeah, I like the way that this deck. I like the way that this deck feels in the fact that like, <clears throat> so you can play this Bloodbraid Elf deck. You know this Bloodbraid Elf game, but then you also can just switch it for Battle Rages and Stubborn Denials, and then play that lean mean Death Shadow game. Like you can't really play the lean Death Shadow game without Denials and Rages. But you can do it, like, it allow, you can just kind of, like, switch into two different games, which I like. Which I'm a fan of. So, I'll keep this. We can lay the land if we need to. Which is exactly what we are going to do. So it's going to get stomping ground when we get swamp. Philly is just moving to the other side of the couch. Swap. Spire of Industry. So we're playing its affinity. Our hand is absolute garbage against affinity. Unless we can just snap off this Mox Opal. Just hopefully stone rain him or something. So Inquisition. So this has to be like Lantern. This isn't... Yeah, this is definitely Lantern. It's not because Affinity wouldn't play a main deck Inquisition. Which we got, we got some game against Lantern for sure. It takes my abrupt decay. He's got to take decay because then I just take him off of a mana here. Too much reverse. Okay. I think I just decay this. He would need another artifact to get colored mana. This probably doesn't mean he's got like Botanical Sanctum or something like that. Maybe on another land. And I've got one more decay and two other K commands in my deck. And like if I hit lands, I'm probably tapping out for the next however many turns. So I think it's kind of greedy to do this, but I am just going to snap that off to hopefully like stunt his growth and slow him down. Because he might need to like Ancient Stirring. And he, he might not have the resources to do that. 
without that Mox Opal turning on the Spire of Industry. And ideally, I just kind of like go, you know, pace myself into lands. And if I if I just hit lands, then I'm not going to have the time to do this. Okay, so there's the lantern. I get to draw the Liliana number three, which is awful. There's the Codex Shredder. Mill me. They didn't do it. Okay, so there's a command. They'll mill that command. And now they get to mill me off lands, which is also like really gross. I'm in a little bit of trouble. And they'll probably keep let me have this. Pixis. Okay, so I'm I'm like nearly dead. I think. Because I need to hit I need to hit like land in the land. And they just got like four mill rocks. I'm going to do this on the end of their turn, just to, like, hopefully force some action. Draw a discard. Draw land. Okay. Bobble. they probably let me draw Bobble. We have Watery Graves. So they're going to mill that. Yep, they get rid of that. So we're just going to play this again, then wait on their turn. I'm not going to do too much longer of this. I do not I do not enjoy playing against Affinity once, or uh, playing against Lantern like once it's over. And we are very close for it to being over here. There's the bridge. Which means that it is likely over. Unless I hit a land. If I hit a land, then I can get my Liliana into play. So the Street Wraith is like an instant speed draw, which can mess up what my opponent's doing a little bit. Yeah, we're, now we're good, because we're not... They're going to have that down. They have three mil rocks, so this game is, this game is over. So I think this is the Blood Braid version of this. I think we're going to cut the elves. We're going to bring in Last Hope, because Last Hope to rebuy Street Wraith is actually important. I'm going to bring in my Grudge, my Stubborn Denials, cut my Fatal Pushes, cut Collective Brutality, keep Liliana the Veil. These Lightning Bolts, are they better or worse than Team or Battle Rage? I think that they're worse than Battle Rage. If I had to have one in my deck, it would be the Battle Rages. Yeah, we're going to run this. Some hot, I don't even know who Cardi B is, Johnny. You're just talking some different language. I'm gonna grab some water. Well, then she probably sucks at singing. This hand is awful. But I've got Liliana in hand. I want to ship this. I'm not going to listen to anything that Cardi B has on it. Um,
I'm getting some love on Twitter for the fact that it shows the picture shows five blood bright elves, but there is only four. I'm going to ship this one too. Dan is pretty good. So am I going to win on a mulligan to four? But it, I have two looks at a land, basically. I think I'm going to ship this. Yeah, I can't really keep this. Oh, nice. All right, Liz Hand's probably the best one we've seen, so hopefully we don't get ley lined. No, we didn't. Nice. So we have to at least check out what our opponent's doing. Picks us on top. It's pretty good against our Ancient Grudge. Overgrown Tomb. All right. I think I want to take this Inquisition. Well, they can't even do anything with it, so there's no point in taking it. I could just take the Welding Jar. They don't have a... Oh, I'm going to take that Lantern. I didn't see the Lantern there, but that is that is the take. You know, well, I mean, if we're not going to draw lands, K-Commands are good ones. <laughs> Pixis... We're likely going to just traverse for a swamp. Yep, we are going to just traverse for a swamp. We're going back to Homer Seal Saturday. All right, take it easy, Johnny. Okay, so there's the Codex Shredder. So we're still missing on lands. We could steal this game. Get this Tarmogoyf down. Next turn, rip a fetch land. Start at least chewing through some of these cards. Okay, so now they're two-thirds away to that bridge. Else me out tail. How do you know that? So I'm actually just going to do this now because I want to grow my Tarmogoyf a point. <sighs> so target player discards a card. Target player discards a card, destroy target artifact. We're just going to get rid of this welding jar. I don't want to give them an option to keep it around. Like they'll probably save, you know, one of these things, but... And now hopefully they don't draw a black source. We know the hand. Oh, they ditched a bridge. Okay. So they must have drawn another bridge. We just gotta hope they don't hit a black source. Okay, so there's a Pixis. Fetch line would be sweet. That's not bad as well, because I was just get Death Shadow into play. Take this bridge, crack our opponent. Because they're close enough to cast that, crack our opponent. Gaining so much life. This is three artifacts? How many is this? If you can search, if you control three or more.
Street Wraith. All right, that's pretty good too. Um, we don't have anything to get back. If I had a Street Wraith to get back, I could kill my opponent, but <clears throat> alas, we don't. We've actually got him next turn, even through. Hey, Philly. None of that, bud. My dog is digging at the couch. I guess we couldn't have killed him because we would have needed one more point of damage. If we had a street wraith, we could have just shocked ourselves with command and brought it back if my opponent was at four, but they were at five, so we can't do that. All right, well, we stole that one. I'm going to have to restart Moto here in a second. I don't think I'm going to change anything. I mean, we're just going to keep it all the same. Keep access to all these K commands, these last hopes. Last hope? It, it last hope is like, it doesn't, it doesn't look like it would be good in this matchup, but it's actually, like, pretty decent because sometimes you get into these, like, fights over the top of your library, and the last hope just rebuys street rates in order to make so you can, like, fight that fight. It's just I Like, it's not super great, but it's definitely something that's, like, worth noticing. <clears throat> yep, we're going to keep this. Pony Mulligan's us. So we're on the double mulligan now. Oh, they lines. No, they they actually they're similar to five. Oh, I'm on the play. He took the draw. That seems odd. So I'm gonna actually get a green source here, even though it makes so I don't have abrupt decay or have a um, stubborn denial up. It's important to make sure that I can traverse for what I need to. I could have gotten a stomping ground and just forgo this. I'm just gonna take my opponent's dot C's. I'll be able to deal with their lantern. My hand's very good. I kind of want to keep it intact. I put a card on the bottom. River of Tears into Lantern of Insight. Or is this another discard spell? They rip a discard spell. They ripped a discard spell. That sucks so bad. So they still have a lantern. They gotta take my traverse. At least I get to take their lantern. All right, they just concede. Okay. Well, I would have drawn it. GG's opponent. I'm actually going to restart Moto here. So let me go with this. Put this up here. Throw the sponsorship page up there. And let me get this back up. So yeah, if you guys are, uh, this stream is brought to you by Card Order, so you should check them out. They uh, loan me a lot of the cards I'm using in this stream, they're the best bot chain in the business. Gamer Craze New York is where I learned to play Magic. They sponsored my stream at, uh, they, they sponsored my stream and they have a really good uh, singles prices, they foster a college environment. So I have the Crystal Commerce below, y'all should check them out. And you can always find all the archives from my stream on YouTube. And I love to talk magic on Twitter. I get trolled on Twitter all the time after this sad... This I posted the picture. Let me go see if I'm crazy here. We need to let the chat know like, if I'm crazy or not. Because... In my league... Let's see, let's see if we're crazy. Because I was talking about the beginning of my YouTube video about how it was it was tweaking out and it was showing um, and it was showing that I had five Blood Bright Elves in my collection, but only four in the league. So let's see what's in the league. Let's pull this up here. View deck. 
All right, so it's four there. Collection. No, now it shows four. Everybody's gonna think I'm crazy. I'll have to link the video. Be like, four minutes into the YouTube video, there were there were four of them. But hey, if Moto lets me play with five Bloodbraid Elves, I'll play with five Bloodbraid Elves. I will take it. I hope everybody's having a good time watching um, watching some magic tonight. log into this all right I hope everyone's at least having a good night just hanging out Let's see if I can fix my chat quick All right, I will keep my hand. This is kind of like one of those hands I think you have to keep when you play Death Shadow. Like, you have a bunch of one-man interaction. You've got a redraw. It looks like we're playing against Jund, which is always interesting. I'm going to cast this turn one hand disruption. Then I'm going to be, well, I guess I'm not going to be very liberal, very conservative with my life total. So my hand is absolutely stacked if I draw lands for the rest of the game. we got to get Overgrown Tomb. Down to 11. Blood Bride, Blood Bride. That is a bold keep. That's like, that's when you know that, like, Moto is just like Moto right now, where it's just mono, like, Jun mirrors everywhere, when you can actually, like, keep that and, like, have a straight face. Or in Catacombs. All right, we're doing it. We just need land after land right now. I'm gonna. If my opponent plays a Liliana, I'll ditch one of my Lilianas. This looks like what's gonna happen here. Okay. So they tick up. They're gonna ditch one of their lands. I'll ditch a Veil, which gives me Delirium, which is kind of cool. If I hit a Fetch Land, then I'll be able to K-Command this Bloodbraid Elf and make them discard a card, and they'll be pretty, basically Hellbent. And if I can do the play pattern of like, you know, boom, boom, they get a creature, untap, edict that creature, I'm back in the game. That's like without Bloodbright Elf. I'd love a land. Okay, that's Death Shadow. I could hold this. But I think I'm going to play it. I just need it, and if my opponent doesn't hit, like, a removal spell, if they just elf into, like, a dude, then I'm gonna want the shadow on the battlefield. Like, it is, it is, like, pretty bad here, running this face first into, okay, Inquisition. It's one of the more mediocre hits. Probably takes like my Coligon's command or my Fatal Push. Takes my little. Huh? All right, Blood Red Elf's gone. The Verdant Catacombs is gone. So I don't know anything about there. I'm just gonna take this. It's gonna grow my Death Shadow. I 
All right, so now I'm going to attack, probably fetch this tapped red source, and just fatal push this. I don't want to take three to do this. Then I can have, like, K command up. If I draw a land, then I can fetch. I'm going to... Uh, I'm not going to do this now, but then I... Well, I might as well actually just do it now to get, my, get another point of damage through, I think. Yeah, I'm going to do it now. So I'm basically priced into doing this no matter what. So I might as well just get another point of damage in and do it on my turn. Now my opponent Liliana's me, I've got I can deal with it. If my opponent I actually can If I'd been more aggressive, I could give my give myself the option to kill my opponent next turn if they have nothing. But they would have to have nothing. Alright, Maelstrom pulls. Okay. Alright, now we blood bread elf them. Hopefully their last two cards aren't lightning bolts, but they would need another red source in order to kill me. We're kind of BBEing onto an open board, which is usually not great, but I think it's just our best play. Um, yeah, I'll cast this. Okay, we're gonna take Tarmogoyf because we can deal with the Bob with our with our K command. I can like K command the Bob return Death Shadow, play Death Shadow next turn, which is sick. Showing my opponent who the real Jun deck is. I'm not going to let my opponent block, I don't think. Yeah, I think we're just going to go... Return... Death Shadow... Bing! Crack my opponent. I'm going to leave this land in my hand. Crack my opponent for three. This is because my opponent kept a crap hand. They kept a hand with just nothing going on. Can't be doing shit like that. Like, you can't, you just can't be doing that. Billy! I need to find the charger for my wife's computer, because that's gonna die, which is my outlet to Twitch chat. So I will be right back. Good dog. Yeah, dude, you can't roller skate in a buffalo herd. Nice. Nice. So, yeah, I mean, this is what I want to figure out. I want to figure out if I'm playing the real gen deck or if my opponent's playing the real gen deck. Like, Blood Bright Elf is better in my opponent's deck than it is in my deck, but my deck is a lot better than my opponent's. So, like, you know, this is where all the questions come in. I like to cut Street Wraiths. I like to cut a couple Street Wraiths and... A couple inquisitions. I like the brutalities because sometimes, like, they pressure my life total really well with like bolts and K commands. So I like those better than inquisitions. But I like the thought seasons to hit um, all the death shadow or all the blood bright elves and to just enable my own death shadow. Yeah, like I don't definitely, I don't doubt that my opponents like. This card, in a lot of matchups, this is my best card. And in my opponent's deck, it's their best card. It's like the best card in their deck. I wish I knew where my wife's max charger was. Watch out, chap. Yeah, I don't see it. All right, Johnny. B. 
be an adult, dude. Don't be a jerk. I will... My hand's pretty good. I'll keep it. These will turn into threats. If they need to be laid in the lands, they can be, but they don't have to be. And I'll, I'm not going to fetch yet. So you might be doing some, like, Bloodbraid Elf Insanity. Yeah, we just take their elf. Hey, Philly. There it is. Found it. Philly boy. She got my dog in here on the stream. Watch out, chat. Okay. All right. So my opponent plays a Scooze. They went Blackly. They went Blooming Marsh into Scavenging Ooze. I think I'm just going to Brutality this now. And I'll hold this and Traverse next turn if I need to. But I definitely just want to use this Brutality while I can. And I don't think I'm going to Escalate it. I like all my cards. Buddy. Oh, no, no, you took that off. You took off the door jam, buddy. Why'd you take off the door jam? Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that, buddy? Alright. Good boy. So I could just go Traverse for Forest, Traverse for Swamp. All right, you want to get down? Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Because I just certainly, I want to be able to Bloodbraid Elf next turn. I want to get something going on. I don't really have a lot going on at the moment. I still have, um, still have a lightning bolt up for some defense. I do, it does suck that, like, I'm down two traverses, which are, like, legitimate late game resources, but it's kind of where we're at. I'm probably going to fire a bolt off at me. I might actually, like, let my, if my opponent. Because I would like to not play this Blood Red Elf into a position where my Death Shadow can get w or won't be cast. So I might just bolt myself. What is this? My opponent returning. They're going K Command, discard. I'll discard a Fatal Push. They are returning. Okay. They brought back their Elf. I'm likely to let this elf hit me, and then, um, then deal with it, just that if I cascade, like I said, if I cascade into a death shadow, then I'm not, then it at least gets played. So I know they have a lightning bolt. How you doing, buddy? Hey, nope. They cascade into a Liliana. It's a lot of value. Boy. Oh, oh. They didn't use that Liliana, so we're going to kill it. Yes. Got to learn today. I could have done that before they I should that was stupid I should have done that like yes my opponent made a mistake but I also could have like not done that okay that's pretty good that lets me defend against Kologon's command also or this raging ravine I mean like them just firing this up so I think 
I want to just go bing, or I could just get my Blood Braid Elf down, because the returning it is just such gas. I think I'm going to do that. I might just chump the ravine. Because I am kind of scared of this ravine. All right, we will cast that. And... Hey. No, buddy. Do I want to come in with this? I kind of want to protect my life total. With this Kolagon's command, I feel really confident about my position. So I think I'm just going to actually just hold back, look to trade Bloodbraid Elves, and then try to K-Command mine back. This might be kind of a little too passive of me to do this, but... But I, like, I'm at a virtual seven. Like Most of the time that I find, like when I lose these against these Jun decks, it's because I get like, it's because I get out carded, I guess. Not out carded, I get out lifed. Okay, so let me think. So I can go push this, attack with both. If my opponent blocks, I can command it back, and then I can just deal, try to deal with this ravine later. I think I'm going to try to get aggressive. Get the Tarn Wolf out of here. Though I might just try to hold this ravine off. Puppy's getting restless. Have to take him out after this league. This is kind of tough. So they have Lightning Bolt and two others. I don't want them to go like Bolt my Bloodbraid Elf and then um, just fire up this Ravine. Stop that. Kind of a tough spot. I don't really know what to do here. I could just send it with both and begin on the offensive. Then, like, take four from this ravine, K command this. But I really want to get into a position where I can get my Bloodbraid Elf back. I think I'm going to hold my Bloodbraid Elf back. Because now I can go like this and you can go bolt. And block and bolt. Which is okay. Now he probably bolts this. Okay. Black Leaf Cliffs. If I'm going to fire up this ravine, I'm going to block the ravine. Okay, now I'm punished for not... I guess my delta would not have worked. So their last card is Lightning Bolt. Stop. So this at least gets the bolt out of their hand. Stop it. Hey, stop it. He's got to think about whether he wants to bolt my, like, bolt my head or bolt this Blood Red Elf. Okay. Stop it. The dog's, my little puppy's being a piss. Now, I have to take him out in between here. I'll probably uh, pause the league after this and then take him out. All right, I'm just going to attack with my... Stop that. No, stop chewing. Stop it. Ooh. Hey, you got to stop chewing on that stuff. Get in here with this. Play this tapped, and then we'll pass. Okay, so you know he doesn't have this lightning bolt anymore. <clears throat> he just fires up his ravine and attacks. We are winning that race. We draw a traverse. Uh, I can traverse for Death Shadow and Elf. I can traverse for a lot of things. 
I have to figure out how do I lose here. I think I'm far enough ahead. All right, so that's pretty big. So I think that just traverses for a death shadow. And then we play the death shadow. Play the land just in case we have to grow the shadow for some reason. I could get a blood red elf and I could have won there, but I just didn't want to go down to three life to do it and then be dead to a bolt or be dead to like a removal spell and then activating the raging ravine. I could have spun the wheel, but it's 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 just a very dangerous game. And it, like he would have just been at one, so there's no guarantee that the elf off the top kills him. I could have hit like lightning bolt or K command. Um, I could have hit a bobble, and that would have killed him also. So maybe I should have gone. What would have killed him? I had one more lightning bolt, two more K commands, a, and a bobble. My opponent damnations me and I'll cry. Just a turn of Okay, so he's got a chump. Well, he doesn't necessarily have to chump because he can just go block. You can bounce goifs. It's actually kind of a big draw for my opponent. Should have fetched. What does that do? What does that do? If I attack with both of my creatures. He fires up and blocks this, blocks here. I can go return Blood Bright Elf, finish this off. Yeah. So he's got to block both. And if he fires up with the weak one, this only has one counter, so it'll only do one damage to me. I'll be at one. So I basically don't have to draw, or have to not draw like a lightning bolt. Like, I'm good to everything but lightning bolt here. Ah, uh, weird, I can't sub to you. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to look into it. So my opponent blocks. I think this deck is very good. It's difficult to build. But I do think this deck is excellent. Okay, to return. Like, if this is just, like, I'm, play I'm playing such a better shell than my opponent. <coughs> you know, like... My deck is so much stronger than his is, even though the Blood Bright Elves are better in my opponent's deck. Like, my opponent's a better Blood Bright Elf deck than I am. But, like, my other 56 cards are way better than his 56 cards. Well, yeah, well, you gotta grow up, Johnny. I don't want you saying stuff like that on my stream. Okay? Like, there comes a line you can say between, like, friends and stuff, but, like, mixed company. I don't need that. I don't, I don't need that. So now I died, like, Raging Ravine. Do you have a Lightning Bolt? Did he? No, he couldn't have drawn a Lightning Bolt. Unless, no, yeah, we're good. I got a one. Yeah. And like my opponent might have won this last game if they'd have used their Liliana right. My opponent's like GG unless you want to fetch. I'm like it's a negative Ghost Rider. All right, so at the end of the league, or do we have one more match? All right, we're gonna finish our last match, then I'm gonna take my dog out, then probably come back in for another league.
I wonder if I can play like if I don't play this version with the blue in it, I might try it with the um yeah, it sounds pretty good. I might try it with the uh with the uh, oh nice. Billy? No. Lay off Megan's trunk. No. I'll be going outside with you in one second, buddy. As soon as I get my butt kicked by this Tron deck. Yeah, we're going to fetch that away. Hey. No. Okay, I'm going to get Overgrown Tomb. Just going to help my opponents get, like, just nothing going on. Their hand's not very good. Yeah, I'm just going to take this Ancient Stirrings. We have a chance in this game, actually. You have, like, John on Sunday? It is a good bet, my friend. It's easy to build. Fairly easy to play. Like versus tower. Nice. Don't. Nice. Like, you're just not going to go wrong with it. <clears throat> Probably going to ditch this brutality. To the Liliana. Because this is going to be. Like, we are in a position here where we might be able to elf on three or elf on four and not have any misses. Okay, that's a scary draw. So we know four out of the five cards. Okay, so now we're going to discard the uh, swamp. with what? What do you mean, Fromberg? Get this out of here. My opponent ditches probably the Sanctum. Maybe they keep the Sanctum because of the chain, but they have enough threats. They don't need... Oh, that makes sense. Makes my Tarmogoyf huge. So now I just gotta hope they don't hit a land. They don't hit the Tron land. They'd have to, like, natural draw into it, too. I would puke if that happened. Okay, now they can at least find it, which they did. All right. There's the power plant, so we know all four of their cards. Uh, ditch this brutality. Pray to God that we... I thought we were going to win this game. They ditch their sanctum. And now we have to flip into a Thought Seize. Just not going to show him the blue. Oh, maybe try um, try white in the sideboard. Yeah, there's a lot of Jun Mirrors, and like Lingering Souls is obviously very good against Jun. Thought Seize! Oh. <laughs> I'm not going to cast it because I'm sad. All right, well, at least I get to crack my opponent for seven. They probably eat both of these. We're not like exactly out of it. Like we do have answers to this Ulamog. But we need a thought seize there for sure. So he goes hits he hits both of these more likely. Yeah. Play my opponent's deck better than they can. Nope, that's not what we're looking for. I will. I could have blocked, then gone and got a Death Shadow, but like that's just not worth my time. Twenty-seven viewers. I hope everybody's having a good night. Um, we're gonna side out. We're gonna sideboard these in. Hang on, Philly. We're going out as soon. I take. I'm gonna have to take my dog out in between leagues. But next league, we're going to probably play a very similar list. Okay, so I don't want this. I don't want my elves. I don't want my pushes. And I don't want the brutalities.
could have BB'd into Lily. Oh, you're talking about if I chump? If I chump, yep, and then I gotta deal with a worm coil engine. So that I just determined that was not worth my time. I cut these lightning bolts. Or by converted mana cost. Yeah. It was all bad either way. So I have a Battle Rage, which Battle Rage is really good. I have a Tarmogoyf, which I get to mess with a redraw. K Command's decent in this matchup. My Tarmogoyf's going to be at least a 2-3. I think I'm going to keep this because I'm halfway to Delirium. Battle Rage is a real good way to steal this game. At least I do have a Tarmogoyf. And I only have six discard spells in my deck. Like, I'm lower than the normal Death Shadow. So, and I could, like, I could bobble, I could, like, bobble into a, whatever it is, like a stub, and then hit, like, a high-impact spell from my opponent. So let's look what we got here. Death Shadow. I don't think I want that Death Shadow. I'm actually just going to go get um, a Watery Grave because these these cards aren't super relevant yet, and I could draw a, a Stubborn Denial off of this um, Death Shadow. No, no, I mean, he was at 9. You could have traversed and you had 5 lands, right? 1 in hand plus traverse. Hit Lily, swung for 6. I would have had to chump block with... Um, Forvin, I would have had a chump block with my Bloodbright Elf to get Delirium. No, we didn't do it. Um, I would have had a chump block with Bloodbright Elf to get Delirium. So, like, I could have, yeah, I could have done your line there, and I would have had to put my opponent at, I would have been able to, I, excuse me, it's difficult to speak. I would have had to put myself at six. Like, I could have Bloodbright Elf in there, been at six. Yeah, I'm just gonna snap this off. No, I didn't. I, I was three. I was three fourths the way there. I think that's better than playing Tarmogoyf because, like, they could just natural draw us. Oh, relic's pretty annoying. I'll get rid of the instant. I'm definitely going to lay the land this turn if I don't. Well, now I'm going to play Tarmogoyf, Wife, but... Uh, it's probably better to get the Liliana into play. I mean, I'm just, like, dead six ways a Sunday, more than likely. Well, Tarmogoyf is not going to do anything. Most likely, anything that I do is not going to do anything. But I think, get, like, establishing this Liliana is going to be important. No, it's it's a uh, and that's like one of the differences between the two decks. Like, if you want to play John or you want to play this deck, is like, <laughs> um, you have to jump through a couple more hoops with this Death Shadow deck. Wow, they're gonna miss a land drop. So this Liliana is actually gonna amount something. I'm gonna ditch my Battle Rage as I'm not in a position to use it at all. Then hopefully I rip a land. I can just start like K commanding them over and over and over again. Just try to get something going on. Their hand just must be all payoffs, yeah. <laughs> like, you do have to jump through a couple more hoops. Like, Chromatic Star, that's a redraw. Which means they probably have, like, Ancient Stirrings in their hand. Yeah, that makes sense. Urza's mine. That's the one they needed. Alright, that's pretty good. So let's Thought Seize first, see if I have to Inquisition before I play my Time of Life. Alright, Karn, Karn, Oblivion Stone. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go take my dog out. They're gonna take a Karn, but then they just play O Stone. I can take Karn, take O Stone, leave them with just one Karn. Maybe I can beat a Karn. Like maybe there's a world. I'm probably just kidding myself, but like.
but we'll give it at least a good, a decent college try. There's the Karn. This probably goes up. No, it just goes like that. Now I kind of want to keep my K command. So I'm going to just hope to top deck a land next turn. And then ditch this land, be able to K command, bring back like my Street Wraith. He might just negative down on this. Well, now we actually get to kill the Karn if we draw an untapped red source. We are like winning the Karn fight. Now, no, we're not. Just kidding. Just kidding. So again, if I draw a fetch land, Oblivion Stone, sick. So I actually can go shatter, so it's fetch land. Fetch land, come on. Show me a fetch land, okay. We have like, I just keep like getting just enough to like stay in this game. I might as well go Shock, Shatter, because it makes it 2-3, puts it down. It says it to 4, so he has to kill it to get it off the battlefield. So target player, right, destroy target artifact. Yes. So now the Tarmogoyf effectively trades with the Karn if we want to get it off the battlefield. Which, like, my opponent's got another payoff in their hand. They didn't play... They didn't play, like, the spell or... Worm Coil Legend. Nice. Nice. I'm just... Might as well just cat. Alright, that's okay. Alrighty. What do I have coming? Land. All right. I'm going to concede. Okay. I'm going to go take my dog out. And then I'll be back up.